from Whittles Field, this is Archbishop Spalding football. Tonight, the Cavaliers host the Eagles of McDonough in an A conference matchup, and here come the Cavaliers. Spalding enters tonight 6-1 on the season, 3-0 in conference play. They're coming off a 54-7 win over Gilman last week. Meanwhile, the Eagles enter tonight 3-4 on the season, 2-1 in the A conference. They lost 23-7 at Mount St. Joseph a week ago. My broadcast partner for tonight is Nick Testoni. I am Glenn Clark. Nick, let's meet our players to watch for tonight's matchup, and we begin with the Cavaliers. Let's learn a little bit about wide receiver Max Moss. Good to be here, Glenn. Max Moss is having a good year, averaging 121 yards per game through the air. He's got 13 total touchdowns just a last game. He had three catches, 58 yards, and two touchdowns, looking to continue the effort tonight. Has offers from Army, Navy, and Ohio University. Max Moss has been such a critical part of what the Cavaliers do offensively. However, a lot more tape that's out there now. And so more teams keying in on Max Moss. Center player to watch for McDonough. Let's talk a little bit about Mason Robinson. Mason Robinson, he's got eight sacks on the year. He's a senior, and next year the young man is headed to Northwestern to play football. Very excited to see him play today on the D-line. Very talented, big, outstanding defensive lineman. 57 tackles, three TFLs as well on the year. Teams are headed out for the coin toss. Let's find out about our keys for tonight's game. We begin with the Cavaliers. It's an emotional night. They have to keep their emotions in check. Yeah, they got to maintain focus, control the emotions. A year ago, they were knocked out by these Eagles from McDonough in a uh, tough 7 nothing shutout loss. They got to keep focused. A lot of returners don't want them to get too emotional, lose some yardage from penalties. And for the Eagles, our key to the game tonight, defensive line dominance. Yeah, so they're going to ride Mason Robinson. This guy, obviously, we said is going to Northwestern next year, but D-line last year took control of this game. A very big uh, component of their shutout win last year. They want to continue to dominate the line up front. Demetrius Smith also back to return this Patrick Claiborne kickoff, and we are underway. So that one sails back towards Smith. Smith's got it about the one. He's got to cut towards the 15, and he will be stood up and brought down at right about the 19-yard line, Kick and that will be where the, the Eagles take over. Fourth and short. Washington. Sims in the backfield. Washington gets the snap. He is throwing. He lobs towards the end zone. He's got his man, and he's got a spalling touchdown to Max Moss. Who else? Just a straight go route off the line. You know, fourth and short, but the D line for McDonough has been dominating. So where they find their success is on the outside, on the perimeter. And it was just a straight go route. Let Max Moss use his speed and go get the football. They go two for three on third down, and they convert one fourth down. Washington to Moss for Moss. It's his 14th touchdown catch on the season for Washington. His 20th touchdown pass on the year, 6-0. Extra point pending. And it's good, so it's 7-0 Spalding here with 6.15 to play in quarter number one. And they fake the give, the rollout wide open, Spalding touchdown, Damian Wilburn. Yeah, they went to a nice tight formation and everybody on that McDonough defense thought it was a run, that it was just a bootleg and an easy pitch and catch in the end zone from Washington, his second passing touchdown already. How about Damian Wilburn tonight? Getting the sack, the huge sack early in the game, following up now with a touchdown catch. Nice game for the senior so far. 13-0 with the extra point pending. Snap was a little off, but they get it down. And he boots it home. So it's 14-0 Cavaliers. We watch the touchdown one more time. Play that was drawn up and executed perfectly. Absolutely. And this is now coming back from McDonough, a huge drive for them. And the freshman, Braden Palazzo, they need to put together a good drive here and get some points out of it. They don't want this to be a route too early. Down 14, still early in the second quarter. They need to put together something good here. And you see that 6'4 freshman quarterback, Braden Palazzo, just 14 years old, playing in huge games. 
valuable experience for the future, but they want to win games. Palazzo back to throw. Again, looking underneath, and he's intercepted. Loop all the way in, pick six for P.J. Polkness. Yeah, probably about the last thing you wanted, like we said, in the big uh, statement drive there. But they get pressure. They bring the heat. And off his back foot, he just tosses it over the middle. And the intended wide receiver just didn't even have a chance. His ball was headed right for Pokeness. An easy interception. And he had all the green in the world to his right to take it in. Second interception of the season for Pokeness. This one, he just waited, stepped right in front of Demetrius Smith. And takes it home, 20 to nothing with the extra point pending. For Palazzo, he's now been on the sideline for a little bit. Someone needs to calm him down, just get him back in. I expect maybe a, a nice, short, easy completion on the next drive. Oh, the snap is high, brought down, and that one kind of knuckles through. Uh, good effort by Bonacici to bring down that snap. We'll go back and watch the pick six one more time. P.J. Pokeness grabbing it. Taking it home, and the Cavaliers have a 21-0 advantage early in this second quarter. They will send out Welch to kick. We saw him make, it didn't count, but a penalty added longer PAT. This kick right down the middle, 26 yards out. Cooper Welch is true. Spalding extends the advantage to 24-0. That is how the first half concludes. All Spalding in the first 30 minutes. Pretty good in all three phases of the game. The Cavaliers are on top 24-0. We'll be back with the second half. You're watching Archbishop Spalding football. Kickoff coming to start this second half. And we are underway. Sam Arbaugh, short kick, you got a flag. flag out, no doubt. And that one all the way up past the 40-yard line for Max Moss. Kickoff return by number eight. In order to keep this alive. And two receivers to either side. Smith in the backfield. Palazzo, the freshman. Trying to get the job done on the road. He lofts it downfield, and oh, he oh. drops it in the bucket. Big time throw, and McDonough is on the board. Jefferson Exenor on a 61-yard touchdown. And just what they needed. I was just about to say, they have not gone to Exenor one-on-one since that very first drive where it was a 50-50 ball. And what do they do? They go right here. It's a beautiful throw in stride. Palazzo hits Exenor, and I think they're going to get Maybe a personal foul after Tyler Brown, and he was in the end zone. And Brown might have, it, I think it was both a late hit and a horse collar. I was to understand there would be no man. Palazzo to throw, fade, Jump Exenor, ball. no. Oh, the flag oh. comes out. Yes, they go back to the one on one matchup, a jump ball for Exenor. And I think they're going to the get maybe probably pass interference there. Pass interference on the defense. Indeed is the call on Sean Johnson, the freshman. Yeah, he was mm. grabbing all over Exenor's jersey. So we'll look at it one more time. Yeah, Johnson never got his head around either to look back at the ball, and that makes an easy call. John Johnson the the never goal. turned his head. Two-point try. We'll do it again. Faking the give, pounding it forward, but not getting there. That was brought down short, and I believe it was Sanchez. Yep, Sanchez, who took the direct snap, not Palazzo, and he has stopped short. The receiver's now to the left, one to the right. No space to operate down to this side for Palazzo. Palazzo again to throw. Looks in the middle of the field, and that's picked off. Gio Boone steps in front. Boone at the 30, and he will be slowed down. Credit Luke Miller for hanging in there. Gio Boone with his first interception of the day and of the season. The senior has done it all this year for the Cavaliers, making a huge play when momentum was taking this game the other way. Three receivers to the right for Washington. He's got Akeem Sims back there with him. One to the left. 
He's looking to the right side. He's throwing short, and that's intercepted in the end zone. What another turn. Demetrius Smith with his second interception of the season. And all that momentum that Spalding took back, they give it right back to the Eagles. So he's looking far side of the field, and it just it's not there. He's trying to force it in there. Eagles take over on the 20 about line. three Cavalier wide receivers in the area. I think it's intended. It was Kaufman, the tight end he was looking yeah. for. Maybe your opponent just kind of goes away. Hasn't been the case tonight. Palazzo again back to throw. Palazzo again looking deep. He's, He's got, got Exenor. 50, 45, the 40, 30, 20. It's a Nobody's going to get him. Exenor again to the end zone. An 80-yard bomb. Two big the touchdown passes pass for the Eagles the in the second half. And they cut it at 24-12. I mean, unbelievable. The momentum shift in this game. This is just an easy pitch and catch. Not the best thrown ball. It's a little underthrown. Exor comes back for it. And then it's just a house call. He outruns three defenders. And next thing you know, 12-point game. 141 yards worth of touchdown passes from Palazzo to Exenor in this third quarter. Six touchdown catch of the season for Exenor. Eighth touchdown toss of the year for Palazzo. 6.56 remaining, and again, they're gonna go for two. Trying to make it a 10-point game. There's certainly a question to be asked about chasing points at some point, but it's the decision they're gonna make. Palazzo again trying to go to the fade. He had Exenor, but he overthrows him. So foul that away. They've left two points on the field with those decisions. And it stays a 12-point game at 24-12. to This game has turned significantly in the third quarter. Welch hangs on to it for a second. Now gets the punt off. It's dangerous. Was it touched? It's going to be down inside the two. Ooh. Indeed. Oh, a huge play. That ball continued to bounce, and down there they the handle it. Andrew line. Daly, Palazzo again standing in his own end zone, and Smith back there with them. Palazzo able to get this one out. It's tipped, and it's still alive, and it's intercepted, and it's going to be a second pick six for the game. This one belonging to Tyler Brown. Unbelievable! Second pick six. This one gets tipped, goes in and out of the hands of. I think two different players, one for McDonough, one defender, and then it ends up finally in the back with Brown, and he has an easy walk into the end zone. It's Brown's second touchdown of the season. He had a kickoff return touchdown earlier this year. Now he gets a pick six, third interception of the game for the Spalding defense. And just as things had turned in this football game, a huge play on special teams, followed by a massive defensive play. Spalding leads 30 to 12, and they will indeed add the extra point, 31-12. Here it is. That one must got picked the first time. Geo Boone, Jaden Ships. It's that classic tip drill. Boone with the first tip. Ships with the second tip. And then the third one belongs to Tyler Brown. He gets the house call. 31-12, Spalding. Nick Balding leading McDonough 31-12. Palazzo to throw. He's got a man open in the middle of the field. It's Sanchez up to the 40. Sanchez trying to break free. He will be spun down. Have the Spalding 45, but a big gainer. And 40 yards to open up this fourth quarter. We'll see if McDonough can get up and get another playoff before the end of the quarter. Sanchez carrying the players like Sean Johnson with them. They're gonna mark it at the 44, and it doesn't look like the Eagles are gonna be in any hurry. Also probably some confidence in their defense. They've been playing better. That is true too. Palazzo looking to throw. Palazzo again chucks it downfield, and this one's just gonna be intercepted. Pretty much a punt. He was looking for Exenor. Tyler Brown playing center field. Comes up with his second interception of the day. Fourth interception thrown by Palazzo on the game. And to your point, Nick, that's basically an arm punt. 
Yeah, I, I mean, it's good coverage there. Brown's playing on that side of the field. They knew it was going there. He just threw it up Cavalier with a prayer. <laughs> you know what? As Brown guys, it, it gets up, you can almost see in his face him saying, maybe I just knock it down. Yeah. We get way better field position if I just knock it down. Washington comes up under center. We haven't seen that much. Washington with the give to Kaufman. Kaufman will rush it in. Kept it on the ground for the majority of the drive, and there it is. The offense gets their touchdown. First one since early second quarter. Big statement drive, and now with under eight and a half to play, that is, that's gonna make the lead a little more, a little more insurmountable, I'd say. And that should bring us to a running clock, 37-12. Clock is stopped right now with 8.23 to play. Kaufman's second rushing touchdown of the season. Welch on to add the extra point, which he does, 38-12. After this, Loyola Blakefield next Friday. Travel to Mount St. Joe, and that's that. We'll be here on November 11th for a playoff game. Spalding trying to, to see the upcoming schedule. Again, Loyola next Friday night, back here at Whittles Field. Then they're out Mount St. Joe on the 5th. On Friday night, November 11th. For a first round matchup in the MIA playoffs. Fourth and four, out of the timeout. McDonald will have only one remaining. Got to get 20 to convert, keep the drive alive. Palazzo looking to throw. Palazzo towards the end zone into double coverage, and that'll be a fifth interception. Just playing center field once again. Tyler Brown with his third pick of the day. Yeah, Brown, I mean, he reads this the entire way. This is just last effort, almost similar to the last time. I believe that's Exenor they were trying to go to again. And Brown read his eyes the entire way, just took a couple steps to his left and took an easy interception. It's probably too much thrown in double coverage tonight. Also, but at this point in the game. Credit to Robinson, though, because the run wasn't at him. Yeah. It was the other side, and he was the one that made the initial contact in order to slow it down so it wasn't a bigger gainer. Into the flats and Newton on third down. He's got the first down, he and loose. he's going to have a touchdown. R.J. Newton with his first touchdown catch of the night. His third of the season. And that is the exclamation point for Spalding in a tremendous performance tonight against McDonough. The whole drive just run, run, run up the middle, mixed in with a couple outsides of Newton, and then they... Looks like maybe a, just a design quick throw out there. It's two on two. Didn't look like they were necessarily anticipating it. And he makes one guy miss, and it's a house call. 31 yards on the pitch and catch. Run after the catch. On for the extra point as well. It's again, the snap a little bit off, but handled well by Bona CC. Emphatic effort tonight for the Cavaliers. They score the first 24 points of the game. They score the last 21 points of the game. Archbishop Spalding improves to 7-1 on the year. 4-0 in conference play as they take down McDonough tonight, 45-12. Your Spartan Cavaliers, 45. McDonough Eagles. The Eagles drop to 3-5 on the Atlanta. season, 2-2 two and two in conference play. Nick, some final thoughts from you tonight, what you saw from Archbishop Spalding. Yeah, they came out early and often. Defensively brought a lot of pressure. Uh, great job getting started on the offense. We got to see Max Moss catch a touchdown pass early. Not as involved later on, but you can see the connection there from Moss and Washington. And the defense. When the defense needed to stand tall. They did a great job. Credit Brown. Three interceptions, including a pick six. Pick six. Played a great center field back there at safety. Teams shake hands there at midfield. Want to thank all of you for joining us tonight. I want to thank everyone who made our broadcast possible, the coaches from both schools, our great crew led by Paul Garza. Appreciate the opportunity to work with them. Again, next game, next Friday night against Loyola Blakefield at 7 o'clock. 
for the entire team. Nick Testoni, great to work with you, my friend. Absolutely. Good job tonight. The entire team. I am Glenn Clark. And your final score tonight, Archbishop Spalding 45, McDonough 12. You've been watching Archbishop Spalding football.